It's One Nation Restorations, and we're restoring another American-made tool with American-made tools. Today, we're restoring this split head hammer made by Garland Manufacturing Company. We'll be selecting a new face type because this one's missing, installing a new hickory handle, fixing the threads for the nut, filing the high spots, filling in the low spots, making a new roll pin, removing the rust, and bringing one of the letters back that's been ground away. The first thing we'll do is remove the handle from the jaws by cutting it off. This doesn't necessarily have to be done, but the short handle makes it much easier to manipulate in the vise. I used a regular cutting saw here that's primed and ready for its own restoration. To replace it, I searched for a 12 inch handle that could be cut down to size after installation, so you'll get more details on that later in the video. With the handle out of the way, it's onto the nut. I don't know what size the nut is, but the largest wrench we have in the shop is an inch and a quarter and it was too small. So I used a 15 inch adjustable wrench to loosen and unscrew it. Work the nut back and forth to help it work out and clear the rust in the threads. Garland installs a roll pin under the bottom jaw and through the casting and handle. This provides extra holding power for added safety and can be removed with a punch. You'll want to remove this before drilling out the handle from the head or you'll risk damaging it. Spoiler alert, I did that. Once the pin has been removed, drill out the top of the handle. Use the largest bit that will fit into the wood without hitting the expanded wedge, which will ruin or possibly break your bit. So wear some safety glasses while you're doing this. Punch the handle out of the jaw from the top because the handle holes and hammers are tapered and the smallest side of the handle is always on the top of the head. With the handle out, it's over to the sandblasting booth. Two goals here, remove the old paint and remove the rust. You can help prolong the life of your abrasive if you use a wire wheel to remove as much of it as possible beforehand. I used an 80 grit abrasive, which is perfect for steel casting like this. After finishing, you should be able to go straight to the painting booth, but I left these parts in a rust overnight because I wanted to make sure that I got all the way into the handle port. After the soak, I used a 12 inch mill file and a double chip breaker to clean up the edges. Garland has been making products since 1866 and is owned by the sixth generation of the Garland family, which is impressive because from the 20 restoration videos I've uploaded, I've only seen a max of three generations before the company was bought out, so kudos to them. I ran the file over any of the high spots created from impacts during use, and then it was on to the filler. I applied a small amount of filler into the low spots on the jaws. The less you apply, the easier it will be to sand. You only have a few minutes to work it in, so you might need to make more than one small batch. The N on the head is missing the corner of the letter. Use a small pick or an awl to carefully work the shape around the corner. I'm most comfortable rotating the jaw and keeping the pick in a steady position to work around the angles of the end. You're better off letting the work dry and applying a second coat than you are applying too much in the area but you can sand and remove whatever you need. This repair was done in one take and it took about 30 seconds to do. After allowing the filler to dry, use a 320 or 400 grit sandpaper to remove anything on the surface. Now for the threads. Use a thread pitch gauge to check the number of threads per inch. To restore the top of the threads, use a thread file with the correct size based on the leaf from the gauge, which was 18 here. Set the file into the threads and carefully work it around like a regular file. Be careful not to take away too much of the material because you can't get it back. And on a piece like this, that would be game over. In a pinch, you could also use a die, but they are far more aggressive and will likely take off too much material. Over to the painting booth. For the color, we use the same green as we used on the bandsaw, which was field green. Now you can handle this after just two hours, but we allowed it to dry 48 hours to fully cure before putting it back together. While the paint was drying, I started work on the handle. This Seymour Midwest Hickory handle came with a clear lacquer coat and two wedges to secure it into the jaw. Seymour has been making tools since the 1800s as well. Use the old handle as a guide to help you shape it and file down the wood with a rasp. It doesn't take much effort to whittle it down, so frequently check with the jaws to make sure that you don't take off too much. To replace the roll pin that I accidentally drilled through, I found a nail with the same diameter. Mark the length and cut it to size with a hacksaw like this vintage one from S-Wing. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the description below for a link to the S-Wing restoration. The next issue is the thickness of the head. I used a 40 grit sandpaper for about 10 seconds to bring it down. But to prevent adding too much heat to the nail, you could also use a file. Once the head thickness matches, file underneath the head and remove the tapered part of it until the diameter is flush with the rest of the shank. The paint is dry and now it's time to reassemble this split head hammer. We'll start by sliding the lower jaw onto the upper. I use some general grease here to protect the exposed threads after final assembly. These faces are meant to be easily changed and this will make sure that you don't run into any problems down the road. Carefully thread on the nut and place the two faces onto the jaw. Here we went with a water buffalo rawhide, at least that's what they used to make them out of. 
Now hand tighten the nut to make the installation of the handle easier. For the installation of this handle, turn the hammer upside down and strike the butt of the handle, driving it all the way in. The other common handle installation method can be seen in the sleds restoration video, but I wanted to showcase this as another option. Place the wooden wedge into the slot and use a chisel to split it into the correct size. Use a soft mallet and strike it until it completely seats into the head or brakes. Before installing the metal wedge, cut any excess handle that's sticking out of the head. To install the metal wedge, place it perpendicular to the first wedge and drive it all the way in or until it breaks. With the split head casting secured to the handle, drill out the roll pin hole. I went down one size in the bit to allow for a tight fit. Start the pin with a hammer and then switch to a punch once you get close to the finish. Check to make sure that it's all the way through on the other side before sliding the lower jaw back up and temporarily securing the nut. This came from the factory with the top of the handle and the wedges painted green, so I'm going to tape off the handle and go back to the paint booth for a final coat. If you found any of these tips helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button with the bell notifications turned on. Now that everything is dry again, slide the faces back onto the head. Garland offers several different types of faces, a urethane and a rawhide for soft faces, nylon for medium, and a garter plastic for hard. The last face you can get is a copperhead for soft metal applications. With the help of their website, you can find a distributor to help you locate a hardware store that carries them. With the piece put back together, it's time to look back. During a restoration, it's easy to lose sight of just how far some of these restored pieces have come. Even before these videos, I would document the before, during, and after pictures because I appreciate the transformation of these vintage tools. For more insights, I'm getting really close to opening up a community on Discord where I can show more of these vintage tools, share restoration techniques, look at future restorations, update projects, and look back into the history of some of these tools. Keep an eye out for it in the weeks to come. We installed a new handle, filed the threads for the nut, made and installed a new roll pin, fixed the missing parts of the end, smoothed out any of the nicks and scratches in the jaws, and gave it a fresh new coat of paint. Now it's time to put it to use. I pulled this vintage window from an antique mall in Florida about 10 years ago, and it's time to get this frame back together. I applied some wood glue up in the corner, and this glue is stronger than the wood itself, so I'm going to make sure that it's properly secured. It only took a few soft blows from this split head hammer to get this frame aligned again, and it's ready to go through another 50 years of use. The hardest part of this restoration was tracking down the new faces from the local distributor. My favorite part was making the new roll pin. This restoration cost about $12 for the replacement faces, and it took about 15 hours to complete. We restored another American-made tool with American-made tools. See you next time.